So I'll pass over to Dom and Kate now. Perfect. Thanks, Nancy. Good morning, everybody. Um, I think I saw the list of people attending today, and I think I might have spoken to a lot of you. Um, but for those that don't know me, my name's Dom. I'm the head of finance at Goodwill, and together with Kate, we look after uh, the finance team here, and therefore the finance services that we deliver to our clients. Uh, a little bit about me. So I joined Goodwill about two years ago. Um, but before that, I qualified as an accountant at some regional practices in the UK and then joined FedEx for about six years. Um, had really good experiences there. But really wanted to get back to that client-facing role in sort of a small family business. Uh, so hence my move back to Goodwill. Uh, so I'm just going to pass to Kate, who's speaking with me. She can tell you a little bit about herself and also as a refresher on some of the services that Goodwill offer. Thanks, Tom. So um, my name is Kate Brennan. I've got a very long history with Goodwill. I originally founded the Warwick office back in 2006. Um, and then I left Goodwill in 2015. I went to work for a subsidiary of a Canadian company and then went on to work for a charity for a few years. And then I got the opportunity to come back to Goodwill in early 2022. So jumped at the chance. And now I'm back day to day. I help Don with looking after the finance team, look after a range of clients and lead on the systems that we're using within the business. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Next slide, Nancy. Um, in terms of Goodwill as a business, we are a professional services business. We've been going for 25 years. We specialize in helping companies from overseas that want to enter, grow and scale into the UK market. We've got a team of almost 50 people now across five departments. So that's HR, finance, corporate governance, payroll and front of house. We offer a really flexible solution so you can pick and choose the bits that you need as and when you need them. Um, today, though, we're going to look at the finance side of things and the tech that's available. So on that note, I'm going to pass over to Dom to intro a little bit more. Thanks, Kate. So before we dig into the agenda, a little bit about um, the finance team at Goodwill. Obviously, the guys that are on this call that have our finance services will know this. Um, but for those, for those that don't, uh, we offer a full suite of day-to-day -day services. I usually bracket into three, three different groups. So transactional support, so that would be sort of processing invoices, bank reconciliations, uh, credit control, raising sales invoices, essentially all the bookkeeping uh, needs of the business in the UK. Um, then sort of your compliance side of things. So it might be annual accounts, corporation tax returns, facilitating audits, um, all the stuff that we sort of, sort of maybe the more boring things, but we definitely need to make sure they're done on time and done correctly. And then finally, the value added uh, reporting. So it might be management reports, uh, making that more bespoke for our clients, helping them understand how the business is performing and what the numbers look like. Um, and that can include things like cash flows as well. So something that we see uh, clients want a lot more uh, going forwards. Uh, and then the agenda in front of us today. So like Kate said there, we're going to focus on the tech side of things. So cloud-based softwares. Uh, so what we use at Goodwill, what's out in there in, in the market. Um, that is available, um, invoice approvals and how to take the manual side out of that and make it more streamlined, more efficient using software. Um, similar with expenses, um, how to make that a bit more automated, um, including the approval flows and help employees rather than going a bit more old school and taking picture receipts and trying to, trying to make that uh, work in the tech space for us. And then finally making tax digital. So that is uh, some legislation uh, in the UK under the tax side of things where you will have to stop basically making manual submissions going forward. It's already life of VAT. I'll touch a bit more on that um, later on in the webinar. And then finally, there'll be some time for Q&A at the end. Can I have the next slide, please, Nancy? Perfect. So first up is cloud-based accounting softwares. So predominantly Goodwill, we use Zero. So we're Zero Gold Partners. Um, we were an early adapter in 2014. And I think to date, we've got over 240 of our clients using this software. So we're really experienced with it. And uh, our, all our team as well, sort of mandatory to, to be gold partners, are fully zero certified. That gives us some really nice um, access within the zero space. So we've got direct uh, link into their tech team and their support team. Um, we can make things sort of listen to our requests a lot more. We can make things bespoke for our clients. Um, and on top of that, Zero has the benefits you can see on screen now. So I'll touch a couple of these just in a bit more detail. 
things like automatic bank feeds. Um, they make bank reconciliations really easy and um, take the manual importing out, out of the way. Uh, we've got uh, making tax literal ready. So I touched on that on the previous slide on the agenda. But a really key point there because zero are in the UK market and they're ready for all that legislation change in, in, in tax law. Um, like I say, VAT is already there now. So if you're with us and you use zero, this is probably the way we submit your VAT returns today. And then finally, uh, probably the most important bullet point on this screen is the integrated apps. So zero are on, are on the front foot in this in this uh, space here. They work with lots of partners that can bolt on almost as a software extension to zero. So zero can be quite good on its own. Um, but it does have its limitations. So things like sales invoices, for example, you can raise sales invoices within zero, make a bespoke template. Um, and that can you can have sort of one-off invoices, recurring invoices. But they work with many partners. One of them, for example, is Chargebee, um, where you can have a bolt-on software, raise your sales invoices in that uh, login um, and manage the process that way. And then there's an integration uh, that, that, that happens whenever you sort of set it weekly, monthly, and that pushes through into zero um, and, and, and gets the sales and invoices into the accounting software that way. So we've got quite a few clients that have use charge in zero. Um, so we, we've seen that work quite nicely. Um, another area is quite common is um, employee expenses and invoice approvals. So Kate will touch on that a little bit later in the webinar too, and how that works and syncs up quite nicely. Uh, you'll notice under the title there it says NetSuite. Um, so just wanted to touch quickly on that because it's a, a software we see growing um, in, in the market quite quickly. So we do have quite a few clients using it at Goodwill and we are sort of have hands-on experience. A couple of our team um, use it on a day-to-day -day basis and support our clients. Tend to we, we feel that the driver from speaking with clients is that it can be used in across different countries. So we see projects going on where they're replacing softwares in each country our clients operate in to use NetSuite and, and to move onto that platform. The obvious benefit there is having one software and maybe you can centralize some of the accounting tasks. Um, some of the challenges we've seen uh, practically as we've got hands-on is that uh, because it is a global software, some of the UK specific um, needs are quite hard to get and that there's sort of additional bolt-ons and it, the system needs to be made quite bespoke. Uh, VAT is a good example. And of course that, that usually ends up with additional license costs. Um, and when we have seen um, any software extensions use NetSuite, for example, the invoice approval software, uh, which is approval max indexed, which Kate will talk about in a moment, um, that can range from anywhere from 2000 a year plus, um, for, for the cost of that whereas zero is around the 400 pound mark so it seems like the partners that work with NetSuite do charge a lot more for the uh, integration um, but you know something that we do use a goodwill have got experience so if you've got any questions around NetSuite or worth thinking about about that platform do get in touch with me and Kate and we can uh, talk a little bit more about that but thanks Nancy I think we'll get to the next slide now Over to me then. So, uh, invoice approvals. Um, in terms of the complementary software we use alongside Zero, Dom's already touched on a few bits and pieces. But for invoice approvals, we're using Dex and Approval Max together with Zero to form our solution that we um, are working with. So we're going to look at that today in terms of how the invoice approvals work for client supplier invoices. So I think firstly, we'll start with why that's important. I think it's really important to make sure that your suppliers are paid on time. We want a streamlined process and we really need you to feel comfortable that at the end of the year, if you have an audit, which a lot of our clients do, not because of their UK size, but because of the group size, um, that things will run smoothly. So although you've outsourced the process, it is fully controlled. So the first thing we would do in terms of this is we'd have a conversation about how the ideal approval process looks for you. Um, it can be anything. It's it's able to be very bespoke, um, the approval max system. So you can have it based on things like, oh, for marketing costs over a certain value, this will need an additional approval. Um, how many people you want in your approval chain. Um, and we can do the approvals based on nominal codes. So you can decide certain costs have to go to certain people on values. So the invoice value can direct it off to different places. Uh, you can have multiple authorization levels in there 
or you can do it based on a supplier or a project. So it's really able to be very, very flexible, which is great. Um, so then you would get a bespoke email address. So it would be like your company name at Dext and you would provide that to your suppliers. They then send their invoices through. And then what Dext does is it will read and extract the data from those invoices and put it into a standardized digital format. So there's no manual entry, no keying, and the data is really accurate. Uh, the OCR function that they've got is really strong. So then it gives our team the ability to just review that data rather than key it. So we're saving some time there in terms of efficiency, uh, but also removing that manual risk. Um, it then allows us to, um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. It then allows us to um, review that data. We then pick the nominal code that it would go to. So for example, if it's um, uh, an event that's happening in three months, we would mark it as a prepayment. We'd put the date on there as to when we're going to release it. And it just makes life really easy for us and for the approval going through. Um, it would then send out email reminders. So there's no manual chasing of this stuff. It's email reminders that come through. Uh, I've got mine set so mine come every every morning I get one and it has a link that I can click on and I can see the invoice I can see where it's coded to I can see where it is in the approval chain which is obviously really helpful for me um, I can decide if I want to approve it or I can leave it until tomorrow and I'll get another reminder um, so it's it's really helpful for us to know where things are in the system um, there's a few things that are really good about it so if you don't want to give people access to Xero, but you know they will be approving invoices, Xero and Approval Max have an open API, so it will always tell you the status of the invoice at any point. So it goes both ways. So it can tell you whether it's out on approval, whether it's been approved and it's waiting payment, or whether it's paid. So that's really helpful if you don't want to give people or too many people access into Xero, you can give them that as an option instead. As a controller, it gives me the visibility of what invoices are outstanding. So I know who I need to chase and when I need to chase those people at the end of the month if they haven't done their approvals. Um, so that's really helpful that I don't have to go around finding bits of paper on people's desk or not knowing where we are with the numbers. Um, but the best thing about it is definitely the audit trail that comes with it. So it might sound really boring, but when we... Um, have the audit trail within the system, it means that the invoice goes posted into zero with two attachments. One is the invoice and one is the audit trail. So that means that when it comes to the audit at the end of the year and they're requesting sampling and testing, we don't need to provide anything. We give them read only access to zero. They can go into one system and they can see everything all in one place. It will show them when the invoice was approved, who it was approved by, the times, the dates, the whole approval process, everything all together, which is really handy for us as well as you guys. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we are with that one. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, so expenses. Um, firstly, in terms of expenses, the one thing I will say is that you really do need an expense policy within the UK. I know we're not discussing that in detail today, but it's something that's really important and really, really key to have from the start because it just assists in making sure that everyone's clear and knows what the expectations are from both sides for the employee and for you as a business. Um, so then in terms of processes for this there's three different ways we're going to talk about today so we've got the really old school way which is the traditional route of claiming back your out-of-pocket expenses with an excel sheet paper receipts scanning them sending them over to us obviously that is not our favorite way um, it's probably not a great way either for the employee because it's time consuming it's inefficient there's emails flying around all over the place and they don't have any follow-up to know when they're going to get paid. And it just makes things more messy than it needs to be. So that wouldn't be our, our chosen route. Um, you have the option where you can do a reclaim via an app. So again, the employees are paying out of their own pocket. 
and then they will take a photo of their receipts and upload them into the app. So we've got several clients that use the likes of like Expensify, Spend Desk, Web Expenses. Um, they take their photos, they upload them. There's another approval flow within that within the app, which then means that the line manager would approve this. Uh, they do have a direct integration into Zero but we will always manually check those, especially for the VAT treatment of those expenses because the employees never ever get them right. So we will do a manual check on those before they get posted into the system. Um, but it does give you everything all in one place. Or our preferred solution would be the likes of Plio. So Plio offer a couple of options. They have a prepaid card. Um, they're also working on offering credit out. Um, but for, in most cases, you would have a prepaid card. You would top it up. Um, and we get some clients that get a little bit nervous about this solution. Um, and there's always a comment that's made about, oh, we, we feel like we haven't got control. And it's kind of a bit like flip it the other way around because you actually have so much more control with a Plio card in the sense that you can see the expenditure daily as and when it happens. You're not waiting until the end of the month for someone to submit their expenses and then having to have a conversation about, well, why did you do that? Like it's too late then, the spend is done. Um, so there's that, again, it's exactly the same. They submit their expenses via the app. The app is really user-friendly. Um, and they've obviously spent a lot of time and investment in terms of making that as user-friendly as it can be. Um, they offer virtual cards as well as plastic cards. There's budget facility. There's a facility to restrict, obviously, taking cash out. Um, so in terms of our preference, it would be a Plio card. Um, the simple things like they make it really easy to run marketing campaigns. So if you've got subscriptions, you can put that on a separate card. Um, the team, they're really helpful. If there's any issues day to day, you can always get hold of somebody. Um in terms of pricing, it can be more expensive than the other solutions. I think the minimum package starts at £39 at the moment. Potentially, you'll be looking at like £20 with the other solutions. Um, but we feel it's beneficial, especially for us in terms of the time that it saves us in terms of processing the data and the efficiency that it brings. Um, the other good thing with Plio is they are an international provider. So again, it can work across the group. Um, we see that working really well in many cases. And I think I'm yet to find somebody who hasn't got a Plio card who doesn't love it. So yeah, I think that's all I can say about expenses. That's great. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about making tax digital now. So. What is Making Tax Digital? Well, it was announced in 2015. Uh, it's a UK government initiative to effectively move away from manual submissions, trying to standardise various tax returns in the UK using approved softwares. It's going to cover all tax returns, so whether that be personal tax returns, which are probably not really relevant for, for, for us or our clients, but definitely corporate company tax returns and VAT submissions. Um, it will capture sort of the whole the whole remit. And VAT is live already. It went live in April 2019. So again, if we're looking after uh, your VAT returns for you currently, we'll be we'll be following uh, th this process. Um, and the sort of next taxes are gonna are gonna follow in the future years. They've been postponed due to what's happened in the world in recent years in COVID. The government's postponed um, going live. It should be ready by now, um, but they'll no doubt follow in in sort of the next eighteen months, two years. Um, if you do use non-approved software, so we have some clients, uh, particularly smaller clients, where they may keep the bookkeeping in-house um, because it is so small, uh, we can still assist with the VAT returns there. We have different approved softwares outside of Zero and NetSuite, um, and we can still sort of look after that side of things for you with the VAT. Um, in terms of keeping up to date with any changes, um, we tend to send mail merges out to our clients at least annually, so look out for those. Um, and we're also quite active on social media with any changes. So as and when things go live with future taxes or anything with VAT changes, then uh, you will be kept informed by us. Yeah, pretty quick, pretty quick slide that one. Just thought it was worth a mention um, because it's just making sure effectively whatever accounting software you use is a, an approved software from HMRC's point of view and it's making tax digital ready. But again, if we look after the bookkeeping, or the VAT returns for you, we'll make sure we look after that side of things too. I think that brings us to our Q&A page. Thanks, Nancy.
Yep, so um, for those that have any questions, you can use the Q&A function in, um, in the bottom bar on your screens. But we have had um, a question submitted on registration, so I'll just ask that now. It's, how do we stay ahead with tech? Uh, I can take that one, Nancy. So um, Goodwill's history is all about efficiency and obviously coming from the Nordics, that's what uh, we started with. Um, so I think we're quite aware that using tech generates benefits for our clients, customers, suppliers, employees, and for our team, it makes the world of finance a lot more interesting. It can be quite dull at times, so I think they genuinely enjoy it. Um, but in terms of how we do that, like uh, goal, as Gold Partners with Zero, we're really well connected. We get invited to take part in like roundtable lunches. Uh, me, Dom, and the team are attending training sessions and seminars all the time, it feels like. <laughs> And um, in terms of exhibitions, we go to ZeroCon, AccountX, and the Digital Accountancy show, Accountancy show. They're really important to us because you can get to see products, demo products, um, and it's it's actually a lot more fun than it sounds, kind of. Right. Um, we've just had another one through. I think we do have a... Um, it's about credit control. The question is, do you know any solutions for credit control? We do actually have an upcoming scheduled webinar on credit control, but I'll let you answer that, Kate, if you wanted to touch on it. Do you know? Yeah, Don can. Don yeah, can do this I'll, one. I'll Dom take that one. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. So um, going back to the slide when I talked, about, I talked around zero in next week uh, and the sort of additional bolt-ons that you can have. Um, so I guess a starting point, zero and next week can handle that themselves uh, on a basic level. So you can set sort of uh, automated reminders to go out, statements to go to the customers. Um, you can change the wording of a spoke that so it gets a little bit more firm um, as, as the process progresses. Uh, but it is quite manual. You do have to set that up and, and check in on it yourself. Obviously, if you wanted to pay for a better solution and, and a different software, um, you can you can so uh, we've recently actually goodwill themselves started using something called chaser that's one of the handful of apps uh, that zero work with um, and that just automates things so um, it can give you output reports it can pinpoint where the age debt is any recurring problems any sort of problem customers um, and then also automate the responses to them and, and chase that debt for you so it just takes it uh, takes it to more efficient level um but you know if you do have any questions about that and, and it was a particular issue for you definitely drop myself and kate a message we can first look at how zero or next week can help or the software that you are using and if not we'll look at one of those software extensions chaser being one of those for example that we can um set up for you that's great um we haven't had any more questions so let's finish uh, thank you everyone for attending um please check out our other seminars that we've got scheduled we've got a whole calendar full um over the next year um one a month so make sure to check those out on our hub on our website um and yeah thank you so much for attending hopefully see some of you again soon in our other seminars thanks everybody. thank you